Hey everyone, I'm Chase, founder of Oak and Oscar. Welcome to the next episode of The Watch Table. I am very excited to have our guest here today. Uh, for folks who are Leica fans or know anything about the cameras, you probably don't even need an introduction, but we have Dan here, who is the owner and operator of Tamarkin Camera, uh, who specializes in Leicas and anything to do with a Leica. Uh, and likely, if you have a Leica, somehow it's probably passed through his hands <laughs> of some sort, new or used. Uh, he's a watch guy, he's a camera guy, he's a friend, and I'm so honored to have you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I'm glad to be here. I just love seeing all the cameras and watches together. It's yeah. great. And, and we're doing something a little different today, where we actually have his collection of watches, collection of cameras, and we're going to kind of, um, through his inspiration and, and reasoning, because <laughs> um, I don't know as much about like as I should, how they kind of fit together and, and, and how they relate to one another. Yeah. But so the first question I have for you is why do you love watches? I have, oh, uh, you know, that's hard to say why I love watches. I've always had one. My father wears watches and I've seen how delighted he gets talking about them and trading them with friends and, and just like Leica's. And so it was an easy way for me to have something, a touch point into the world of Leica as a young man because I couldn't afford one of these cameras. <laughs> and I was actually more interested in knowing what time it was than actually taking pictures. Sure. And so I really came to watches the same way I came to Leica's, which is through my father. Yeah, that's great. But now. We were talking about your watch collection, and you were saying that some of the first watches that you got into were these super colorful little Tag Heuer Formula One watches. Oh, I love these. So tell me the story of how and, and why you were drawn to these. Um, well, being a watch wearer, I had a Timex something or other. I don't remember what it was, but I wanted a nicer watch. And I saw a friend of mine had one of these Tag Heuer Formula Ones, and it had a phosphorescent dial. And I was like, oh, well, that's just cool. I mean, this is way before LEDs or backlit anything. You know, this is when the alarm clocks flipped. You know, the numbers mm -hmm. flipped. Sure, yeah. Right. So I just fell in love with them. And they're, the first one that I got is this, this one, which is no, unfortunately no longer running. And actually part of the dial has started to fall off. But I wore this watch for 10 years. I traded it. Um, with a friend, I think this is the one I traded with a friend for a Burton snowboard. And I had a, I bought a Burton snowboard and realized that I had no business owning it. And he had this watch and I traded him. And then eventually I got a bracelet for it, which is now on another one. So I've got a few here. Um, and I've just acquired them over the years. The yellow one I found at a thrift store it was brand new or like new. It didn't have a box, but it was brand new, um, 80 bucks. And I could not buy it. And so I've just been accumulating them over the years. And I called, and this is my adventure watch. If I'm going camping or hiking or anything like that, that's the watch that I'm wearing. The it's green the Tag green Heuer. Tag Heuer, I love it. Yep. So you still wear them today. You got them in I, the 80s and you're still wearing yep. them today. Except for the original one, which is just not worth fixing. Sure. But in, kind of in preparation to talk today, I went online to see, you know, if people still sell these, sure. and of course they do. So yeah. I might have another Tog Heuer in my future. <laughs> I might have to replace that original. I love it, I love it. And then a couple other watches that you picked up that of course are special to you because of their brand. You have no idea of provenance, who even made them, fakes or reals, <laughs> we don't know. But you just kind of kind of found these, these Leica, we're not gonna call them a swatch. The, but yeah. these these Leica watches that um, which are just fun and playful and obviously go very well with your style and things that you like. Absolutely, absolutely. And so the they made a bunch of watches um, as swag or as products. And one I found in a bin at a camera store, the one without the band. And I I've, I've never put a battery in it, but I should try. I bet it I bet it works. Um, they would give these away in the '80s and 90s. The one with the band I got recently along with the Leica teddy bear. Mm. Um, and so uh, Steve, which is a teddy bear maker in Germany, they're 
coveted, they made a Leica bear, and they only made about, I don't know, maybe a thousand of them. Someone Does it have like a little camera around it? Yeah, 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 it's got a little camera, it's got a little cap that says Leica, a little like photographer's vest, <laughs> and on the bear's wrist was this watch. That's fun. And so I, uh, it was on one of my competitor's websites, and so I just bought it off the website. <laughs> and then I took the watch off of the bear, and I, <laughs> and I brought it here. But so that this is the first connection of cameras. And so this watch was made to celebrate the launch of the Leica M6. And this is actually a Leica M6 TTL, which is the successive model. But this is the, the camera that they were making when they made that mm. Swatch-esque watch. And so they would give those away at Photokina and at the camera shows. And so this is the camera that they would have, um, that they were promoting at that time. And it says on the band, M3 to M6. And we also have an M3 here, which is kind of where the whole Leica thing really took off for a lot of people. We'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so another collection of watches that you have are these little cocktail watches. I'm crazy about Burrell cocktail watches. Yeah, tell me more about that. So these are I, fun, little, fun little things. I love them. So I was in a resale shop with my mom in, I don't know, probably late 80s. And it was actually the same store that my grandparents had owned as a frame shop. Um, and it was a little strange to be in there shopping for other things because it was a, uh, a different store at the time. Anyway, I went in, I fell in love with this watch, a kaleidoscope watch, and my mom and I split it. I wanna say it was a hundred bucks. And I couldn't afford it at the time and mom and I split it. And it was my dress watch for many years. Now, it's really difficult to tell time when this thing <laughs> is running because the hands are really small. It's a Borel cocktail watch and they were made in the uh, 50s and 60s. And it's just impossible to tell the time. And this one I've worn a lot and then I've seen them for sale, but I've never seen a square um, case. Hmm. And I had seen other ones. Usually they're round with big lugs and they're mm -hmm. larger than these. And a friend of mine who's into watches uh, said, oh, that's the ladies model. Mm -hmm. And I, at the time, that found that emasculating. And I was like, no, 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 this is the men's watch. And he was like, no, Dan, it's not the men's watch. And he showed me, you know, what a, the round ones. And I said, that's hogwash. Anyway, as the years went on, I would always keep my eyes open for these watches and I found another one in new condition. Yeah, it's a Which is why there's two here. Yeah. I've never worn it. It has the original crown, which the other one didn't have, the original yeah. crown pin. It's got the original band, the original buckle and everything. Yeah, this condition is actually crazy. Isn't wow. it nuts? Yeah. And so I had to buy it. And it's the only other square one that I've found. And I'm sure they exist, but they're very uncommon. And then shortly thereafter, because I'm a little bit of a maniac for collecting things, I also collect guitars, <laughs> is I found the ladies model. Which of course I had to buy, even though I was single well, at it, the time. It, but maybe it also vindicates that if there's a ladies model. It told, I felt totally vindicated. And of course <laughs> I sent a picture of it to my friend and I was like, see? And so anyway, this one is also in very beautiful condition with the original band that actually says Ernst Burrell. That's cool. And I gave this to my partner, Susan, and she loves it, she wears it um, a lot. The other thing that's interesting about these versions, and they're all identical versions of the watch, is that the other square cases that you typically see have the markings, the hourly markings, mm -hmm. on the outside mm. of the sapphire or of the crystal, mm -hmm. not on the inside. Mm. So it's special in a couple of ways. Now, some of the folks that are watching this might say, oh, that's BS. I see those all the time, no idea. I'm steeped in the camera world, not so much, <laughs> not so much the, um, uh, the watch world, but I'm just in love with these, cam uh, with these watches. See, I get, yeah, I get it, confused. It and I brought along a camera from 1926 um, to match with these watches just because I think it's a very beautiful piece of engineering and it kind of reminds me of the good old days. Um, and even though they're not, they weren't contemporaneous, this is a Leica Model 1 that was made in 1926. And it just came off the bench. It's working and ready to go. And it just kind of reminds, they kind of go together for me. Sure. You know, it's got classic. Who would have bought 
this camera back in 1926. Ooh, you'd have to be, well, first of all, most cameras back in 1926 were the, were giant. They sure. were on a tripod, yeah. you know, you threw the, they were wet plate or whatever, and you threw the hood over you and, and they were very difficult to use. Mm -hmm. And so you had to carry all of this gear. And so you would have to be quite wealthy to afford one of these cameras in 1926, but they were um, an instant hit with amateur photographers. Hmm. I mean, nobody was really a professional photographer at that time, I don't think, but for anyone who was or was aspiring, this was a vast um, departure from the giant cameras that were used at the time. And it took 35 millimeter roll film and it goes right up in the camera, like mm. the same kind of roll film that we use today for more modern film cameras. Um, and so it was really revolutionary. Wow. Yeah, it was absolutely revolutionary at the time. And there's something about the that antiquity and like people dressed nicer and wore hats and like <laughs> things were made well. And so that's the connection that I make sure. between the Borel cocktail watches and the Leica One Model A. Uh, from 1926. That's fun. That's a really fun connection. Now I know some of these watches you've kind of happened upon. Uh, one of which is this Timex with this really great crosshair dial. Yeah. Fun piece you've put on an orange nylon strap. <laughs> I love orange. Um, you said you just found it in a drawer. It's like 10 bucks. I found that watch rifling through a box of other stuff. I don't even remember if they were watches. And it was 10 bucks and I could not buy it. Yeah. And I give it, I gave it a wind and I listened to it and it made some noise. It didn't have a band or anything. And I was like, 10 bucks, why not? So I threw it on the table along with a bunch of other stuff that I was buying because I'm a collector. That's what you do. I don't even remember what else I got at that store. And I don't think I'd ever be able to find that place again, but I love that watch. And it's simple, it runs great. I'm not afraid to beat it up. I don't, it's not precious to me, but in part because you might know a lot of the, notice a lot of these have orange hands, yep. right? <laughs> a lot like the Oak and Oscars. Well, uh, and speaking of which, the very first watch that you got from us was our very first watch, the Burnham. I fell in love when I saw it. I love how the seven is crossed. I even like, I don't know if we ever talked about this, but when the um, second hand comes around to the top of your logo, it kind of looks like a camera. Yeah, oh, there you go, yeah. I, I just I just thought it was such- We've had folks ask if that barrel mark is actually a camera. Is that what you call that thing, barrel mark? It's So the barrel mark is a secondary mark that is now um, separated from the word mark. It's on things like crowns and other places. Yes, no yes, yes, yes. No longer on the full dial. Okay. Um, except in hidden ways. We do have it on the dial and on modern watches with hidden hidden ways. Ah. Uh, but yeah, folks have asked if it's a uh, if it's a camera. Yeah. And I I feel like it's it's kind of what you want it to be. Uh, in truth, it is actually a barrel on its side with an O in the middle. And the ah. negative space actually kind of creates a watch case. Aha, uh -huh, okay. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. I love it. That's great. That, it just goes to show you the watch is very well thought out and it just landed with me. Yeah. And so I wore it every day for the longest time until I got the Sanford. <laughs> until you got the Sanford, <laughs> which is such a fun piece. Oh, I'm crazy about this watch. I wear it almost every day. It's my favorite of all the watches here, except for the one that we'll talk about. That's my favorite watch yeah. on the table. And it replaced, for me, my love of the Formula Ones. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, because I wanted something of more substance. I wanted something automatic. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something that was like a grown-up watch. <laughs> and so and so, I'm, I'm crazy about them. I also like the fact that you can see the complication, that it has mm -hmm. a clear back, mm -hmm. which the Burrells do as well. And mm -hmm. that was one of the things that I really, I never owned a watch like that, mm -hmm. other than the Burrell, which I only wore once in a blue moon. Sure. And so to have an everyday watch like that is really quite a thrill. And you really know when people are into watches or into Chicago if they recognize it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I hear from folks when uh, people recognize that they're wearing an Oak and Oscar. They say it immediately starts a conversation. Which Absolutely. Is so, it's so fun. Absolutely. And one of my favorite things about it, and this is one of the reasons really that I got the thing, are the Chicago stars. Yeah. Because, you know, I moved here in 1990 from Connecticut and. I just fell in love with this town. Yeah. And so anything that can show, even though it's on the underside, anything that can show my love of Chicago, I'm all about. So yeah, there's something really, to me, very special about the brand and about these two particular watches. 
Um, and what's great about those stars is that if you know what they are, yeah, you're connected to it. Yep. If you don't know what they are, they are great looking stars. <laughs> yeah, they're just beautiful. And yeah. it, it makes a nice graphic, whether it's on the rotor, whether it's printed or engraved somewhere. Yeah. There, it looks nice, it fits, and it's an extra meaning for the folks who know. Absolutely. But my favorite part of the Sanford mm. is the GMT is the bezel on the inside. Mm. Yeah, the internal bezel. And I was yeah. showing that to somebody recently and they're like, oh, cool. And I was like, no, wait a minute. You didn't really, you weren't paying attention. <laughs> the bezel rotates on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I just, I mean, I just love it. They were not impressed. It's really, <laughs> it's, I mean, they love the it's, watch. It's really, they, it's really fun to be able to operate an internal mechanism from a crown. It's really cool. But it, and it feels different, not like tactile way, but it feels different like emotionally than if you're just operating the hands. Agreed. I don't know why. Agreed. Can't Absolutely. Explain. There's something about, I think, I think it's being able to see it move, but not being able to touch it. Yeah, because you know we we always we want to we want to touch, touch we yeah. want to touch everything. We, uh, <laughs> I want to make another piece that has an internal bezel like that. We'll do it one day. For Sign sure. me up. Um, we'll so, do it some way. We'll do it in a, in a fun way. I brought. I'm sure. I brought along. So the camera that I was carrying. This is the one digital camera that mm -hmm. I have. This is the Leica M Monochrome camera. It's about 11 years old but, now. Which you've nicknamed. Monica. Oh, there we Monica go. the monochrome. <laughs> and uh, my favorite lens, a 35 millimeter lens. And so I brought this camera because this is like the sand for my everyday carry. And it's also what I was shooting with when we met. Yeah. And when we started uh, our watch conversation. Yeah. And another watch that you came into because of me in a very different way. Yeah. Is <laughs> this very random chronograph that I have to be honest, I don't remember how I got it. Um, it's an Arden, it, it's 17 Jewel, it's it's a fun, fun piece. The dial is colorful, there's tons of things going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with like a lollipop hand, it's, a, it's, there's nothing more I can really say because honestly I don't know anything about it. Uh, I was but hoping you could tell me more, I, neither of us know anything about it. But it was one of those things that I had picked it up, you saw it at an event that we were together, actually at your place. Yeah. And you're like, I have to have it, I love that. I said, if you ever want to sell that, and a couple of months later, maybe it was a couple of weeks, I don't remember. God, I just love this dial. Cause it has like this, you know, opalescent kind of look to, mm -hmm. I don't know what you call that kind of, and it's got the, the red and the, oh, a little bit of orange, little pops of color. I just love this watch. I also love it. I also love it that I don't know anything about it. And yeah. it's kind of a mystery. It's my springtime watch because oh, nice. it has, it's like kind of a springtime yeah. look to it. It's a, it's a fun piece. I absolutely love that piece. It's the only chronograph that hmm. I own. And so to go along with the Timex that we talked about and the R10, um, I brought along a black paint M4 camera. And sure. this is what Leica was making in the early 1970s. Um, and this one's just pristine. This isn't, yeah, it's in factory showroom condition. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the thing about these cameras that's the most delicate part, whether it's an antique or made in the 50s or 60s, is the vulcanite, this faux leather that they put on. It gets very brittle. But yeah, this is a very rare and desirable camera now. When I, when I got it, they were not so rare, but now they've really, they've skyrocketed. Um, so this is a nice example of a 1970s Leica, uh, also with a very desirable lens on it, the famous eight element Summicron. Um, well, I don't know why people go so bonkers for this lens, but they do, God bless them. So. <laughs> Every uh, people like what the heart wants what it wants. <laughs> I totally get that. I totally get that. Uh, and then a watch that you're also proud of, who is a, another local Chicago maker, a friend of mine as well, Andrew from Astor and Banks. Mm. This is a one of kind of one piece. It is. That's my understanding. It's actually one of two. Okay. That's my understanding is that, uh, so Andrew makes these watches, Astor and Banks, and they're terrific. I just love them. I wear this a lot. Um, he was making watches, Astor and Banks made watches that were too big for my wrist. Mm -hmm. And they're very big crown pins. And I really like the aesthetic, but I wanted something smaller. And he goes, come into my studio and check out what I've got. I've been thinking about making smaller watches. I was like, sure, let's do it. And so I picked out this dial and these hands um, and he made me a watch. That's and awesome. so, and my understanding is that he liked my choices enough that he made one for himself too. That's very cool. Isn't it? So it's I love that. Great to have Chicago represented. I know, I feel so strongly about it. And then a watch that I think you love, you've gotten over 
some of the parts that, that came with it, but your yeah. uh, Omega Seamaster. Ah, I love this watch, man. So this, you know, oh God, I just love this watch. It's a beautiful piece. Isn't it? It's an Omega Seamaster. It's from, I want to say the mid or maybe late 50s. Um, I don't know how to tell exactly, but it has a bump movement. Mm -hmm. And when I got it, I thought it was broken. I'd never seen one of these things. <laughs> and so anyway, I just, I, I just adore this watch. It was given to me as a gift. This is a, my, like my tuxedo watch. It's sure. either gonna be like the Omega or the, um, or the cocktail watch. Um, 1950s, again, very understated, a little bit deco-y. Mm -hmm. I just love, 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 love this watch. And sometimes people will hear it clicking on my hand would be like, what's going, what's that sound? What's that sound? It does take a little while to get used sure. to. Have you ever worn one of these? Bottles? I've not worn one. No. It's so strange because you can kind of feel can it feel too. It, yeah. um, but it has this just really beautiful understated, it's just so simple. And it's got little flourishes of deco, like the numbers. Mm -hmm. I really like that a lot. And so to pair with this watch, thinking about the 1950s, I brought what a lot of people think of as the classic Leica, the Leica M3. And this is the first Leica that they made with simple bayonet interchangeable lenses. And like the first Leica, it revolutionized photography. Mm -hmm. And originally they made these cameras to wind twice because they thought that the static would mar the film. Hmm but it turned out to not be true. So this is kind of an early M3, and it just reminds me, 1950s, it just reminds me of uh, the Omega from that classic uh, German engineered design. They just seem to go together. And your ex-wife didn't get you the camera as well. No, just she watch. got me the watch. She got me the watch, and <laughs> but, I absolutely but we're past adore that it. Now. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. So Laura, thank you for this beautiful watch. I'm crazy <laughs> about it still. She's a great gal. That's great. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And then, of course, one watch that we have to talk about yeah. that I think has a great story, oh, yeah. along with the camera that you've brought with it, yeah. is your father's yep. Rolex GMT here. So my dad is a Rolex hound. He has a Daytona. He, has a, he had a presidential for a while. He's got a couple of, he's got a Datejust that I love. Um, he's got a whole bunch of them. And, he would, like me, would trade for, this is how Andrew and I got started at Astor and Banks, we're trading, you know, uh, cameras for watches. So when I turned 25, my father gave me this watch. Now he wouldn't sell me a Leica before that because he was like, oh, you're too young. No, you, you're, too, you're too young to own a Leica, you know. Uh, you know, but, Rolex. Or it was like, too, it was too fancy and expensive a camera for a young man to own who was not really serious about photography. I was serious about the object. Sure. And so, um, so mine is a family business. My father uh, started the business in 1971, buying, selling, trading. And so I had always admired uh, Rolexes, of course, well, absolutely unattainable for me. I'd always admired Leicas. And so I, eventually I convinced him to buy me a Leica about a year after he gave me this watch. But this is a 1675. I have the, this is a newer crystal. I have the original still, which is all hacked up. Um, I just adore this watch. I wore it around for a while and then realized that um, it was absolutely irreplaceable, both from a monetary and emotional standpoint. Mm -hmm. Even though my dad's alive and doing well and I'm probably playing golf right now. <laughs> and I love the crazing on the dial. I mean, I'm just bonkers for it's this just watch. I just love it. So he gave yeah. that to me and that's what makes it really precious. Yeah, and I absolutely. won't let anybody work on it unless I totally trust them. It's a prized possession, as is my first Leica camera, which is a Leica M2. And um, I finally convinced my dad to sell me a camera and I bought the only camera <laughs> that I could afford. And it was all, the leatherette had all fallen off. I had it replaced. Um, and it was a really rough camera. And I owned only the camera itself. And I would play with it. I would look through the viewfinder because I didn't have a lens. I couldn't afford a lens. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. It was six hundred and sixty dollars. But how beautiful is that? That it's just the appreciation. Oh, I loved it. And I would open it up, and you could, you can smell the oil and the alcohol that they use when they when they clean these things. And so I would play with it, and the shutter just makes me swoon. Yeah. And then I got a job working on a movie set, taking stills. And I said, Dad, I got this job. Can I borrow a lens? 
and he gave me this lens. Oh, that's great. And he lent it to me. And this was the lens, this lens today sells for about a thousand dollars, but back in the day, they, you know, they sold for a few hundred bucks. And so he lent it to me, probably figuring that I was going to destroy it. Like I did lots <laughs> of other stuff. Um, and, uh, but eventually when I, when I told him that I was going to give it back, I was ready to give it back to him. I had finished the project and I was ready to return the lens. Yeah, you just keep it. It was really, really That's nice awesome. of him. I think we're now in the rapid fire questions phase. Are you ready? I'm ready. What's your favorite complication? GMT. Is that, does that qualify? Absolutely. Yeah. I just, I love them. I Absolutely. love the fact it took me a while to learn. Oh, this is not rapid fire because I'm telling stories. <laughs> it took me a while to learn how the GMT worked. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. You got to figure it out I didn't, I didn't really understand it. Yeah. Okay, go. Okay. Uh, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Hawaii. Okay. Hawaii. I kind of expected to Cuba. You know, you go there a lot. I love Cuba. Yeah, yeah, I, well, that's where my vacation home. That would be my vacation home. <laughs> I love it. Uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I don't know, this might sound cheesy for our subject matter here, but it would have to do, have something to do with time. I would like to be able to stop and restart time. Mm -hmm. I think, has anybody ever it mentioned that to one be before? It's very time related when people ask, like, say what their superpower would be. Time travel, stopping time, something like that, yeah. I would say stopping time or time travel. Yeah. Yeah, all right. What is your favorite drink? Something on ice. Okay. Uh, my current favorite drink, sure. especially considering the weather, is an Aperol. Okay. Aperol spritz, love them. It's the only way I'll drink champagne because it makes me loopy. Um, I'm a Johnny Black guy. Okay. That's that's my go-to, but go. currently my favorite drink is an Aperol spritz. Awesome. All right, who would win in a fight? Ansel Adams or Henry Cartier this one? I'm gonna give this one to Ansel. Mm -hmm. He's a scrappy, he was a scrappy guy. I think they're both scrappy. That's a really good question. They are actually both scrappy. I did a little research and I was like, actually this is good. Ooh. They're not just great photographers. But they grew up in that world of like, they had to like take care of themselves. No, you know what? I'm gonna revive, no, I'm gonna say Cartier Bresson. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Cartier Bresson. Okay. I'm gonna, and I'll tell you why. He didn't, hated to have his photograph taken. Okay. And Ansel Adams, this is my reasoning, is Ansel Adams was by all accounts very friendly and easygoing and would talk to photographers. Okay. That's my understanding anyway. Uh huh. And so I'm, no, I'm gonna give this one to Cartier Bresson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Last question. Okay, I'm ready. All right. How many date discs are in this jar? Eighty-seven. 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 All right. Eighty-seven. All right. Yeah. With that, a huge thank you for coming on the watch table. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank Chase. you so much.